All right, man. It's starting to look like a motorcycle again. Check that out. This is pretty cool what I do here. I ain't seen nobody do this yet. I took a broken chin guard. But if you notice, I've got the aftermarket chain guard inside. So basically, this is somewhat for looks. It also keeps shit from flying up off the chain up on top of the motor. I think that looks pretty cool, though. I ain't polished it up yet. But that looks good, I think. The bottom part's busted out. Isn't that amazing, though, that this case still has all the mounts for the chain guard? They're not busted. You don't suppose it could be why... It's because they have that on there. That's probably why they're not busted. The engine looks good on this side. The engine's starting to look pretty good on this side. Yeah, Ill-fitting. Very ill-fitting, but it'll cover up the filter. It'll keep mud off the filter. Plus, I can still get at my carburetor adjustment. And Kickstarter fits. It doesn't touch the exhaust anywhere, like the original ones do. Usually got to trim the original ones right here on the corner because they touch the exhaust right here on the mount behind it. And, uh... When I change the oil for the final time, I'll go ahead and throw that baby on there. So this side of the engine will be finished off nicely. Doesn't look too bad. I'm going to go ahead and paint that yellow piece of shit there white. I've got some white plastic paint to put on it. And I'll kind of rough the white up to kind of match the front and the rear because they're not white and it's a good thing I checked my uh, cam chain adjuster but I'll tell you what this sucker is screwed up give me a second here one hand you know there's the cap the cap's broken too by the way well, starting to break anyhow, but that sucker is locked up tight. Plunger is completely bottomed out. Spring rotates. It's tight, but that plunger. No wonder my cam chain adjustment felt so friggin' funny when I adjusted it. It's like, what the hell? It didn't move. I was like, hmm, what's going on there? I don't know what happened here. But it doesn't have any funky weird wear on it or anything like that. And the weird thing is, the end isn't smashed. <laughs> I don't know. But I got another one on there. This one's a good one. Not smashed at all. And, and the plunger moved freely on it. Back and forth. In and out both sides. Hard to do with one hand. Holding the camera. There we go. Yeah, these don't have to be very tight, by the way. If you're wondering. But when I uh, start it next, I'll show you the adjustment on that. Because I did not adjust mine yet with it running. The running adjustment I didn't do yet. But that, that don't look so bad on there. Once it gets painted, it'll look better. But it'll keep the crap off my uh, air filter. That's all I wanted it for, for now. Just keep stuff off the air filter. Some guys, they just straight pipe these. So I was thinking maybe I might straight pipe this one. But 
If I straight pipe it, I think I'd uh, run it all the way out to the end. <laughs> all the way out to the end. Wouldn't mind having a better pipe either. I would love to have one of those stainless steel ones that they have for these now. But man, they're spendy. 165 bucks for just the header pipe. No flange, no bolts, no nothing, no gaskets. But it is stainless steel, and I think it's, I think it's a two-inch pipe, two and a quarter-inch pipe, maybe even a two and a half. And after sitting on this, I do like the way these bars feel. After finally adjusting them. I got them set pretty far forward. I don't know if you can see that angle or not. Here would be straight up and down. And I have them forward. But of course, you know, the Yamaha's got the layback top tree here. Which brings the bars about three and a half maybe four inches well no about three inches off the center of your fork tubes back this way this way but it's really close man it's close got a bunch more paint and a bunch more cleaning to do still which is always a pain in the ass and my street's busy right now. <laughs> Not usually that much traffic. God, what a lot of work. This bike's taking some time. But usually I don't go through all this trouble. Usually I just clean what's there up and go for it. But this one I've I've invested some time and money in. Replaced all the stupid cables. And not one cable was bad. Not yet anyway. Oh, a guy earlier today asked me, Why'd you put that sticker on there upside down? Well, if you're looking at the bike this way, it's upside down. But when you're doing a wheelie on the bike this way, it's right side up. Let's put one back here. I still need to change this front sprocket. I don't have to, but I don't need to be going 90 miles an hour through the woods. So I'm going to put a 16 up front rather than the 14. Yeah. I believe that's a 44 in the back. A 16 and a 44 ought to give it some torque. But uh, the miles per hour is going to suffer from that. Not a whole lot, I wouldn't think. You're probably 20, 30 mile an hour slower, which is what I need. <laughs> because when I rode it before, it was fast, man. <laughs> I had it up about 90 or so a couple times. And, you know, 90 is pretty, pretty fast to be going down a dirt road. Pretty fast. I just can't wait to go ride it soon. I'm still debating on what I want to do if I want to do a headlight or not. If not, I think I'm going to get one of them old school aluminum front plates. Or just wait until I get the freaking orange plastic set from Keto.
I already had a guy actually try to buy this from me earlier today. He rolled up here when I was working on it. I said, hey, you want to sell that? And I said, nope. I think he's one of those guys that part things out on eBay. I call them motorcycle cannibals. Come along and buy a bike like this and they, they just part it out. They don't care if it runs or not. Numbers matching or not. They don't care. I know a guy that just freaking parted out a freaking 76 XT500C that only had 3,000 miles on it. And he parted the bike out. That bike was probably worth eight grand. At least eight grand. Because it only had the 3,000 miles on it. Had the original tire. I mean, it was it was a cream puff, man. I'm talking the nicest original XT500C I've ever seen. Sat in a freaking climate-controlled garage its entire life, almost. Came out of Southern California. The guy paid, I think, $4,000 for it. And he parted the damn thing out. But I think he made uh, almost 8000 bucks on the bike. So, but that's terrible. It's just terrible. The 76 XT500C exhaust pipe... I shit you not, it's going for like a thousand dollars for a complete one that's not rusted out. As long as it's complete and doesn't have holes, and all the guards are there and it's not bent up, I, they're they're worth about a thousand bucks, maybe a little more. I was looking around on eBay uh, yesterday, and I noticed. <clears throat> There's a company over, I think, in Thailand that makes a chain guard for this, almost exactly like this one. No bottom. And then it runs over here like this to the other mounting post. I don't know. I really don't know. But I think this looks good. Once I put the skid pan on here, man, oh, yeah, because I, I cleaned up the skid pan really nice. It looks about this color, or maybe this color, but it went on there really nice. Well, it was stained almost brown from 40 years worth of shit being put on it. It never really cleaned off, so it really, really dirtied it up. The aluminum had stains on it really bad. You know, I don't, I think, I think, I'm not 100% positive, but I think this inner guard might be stainless steel too, because it cleaned up really nice too. I didn't polish it, I just cleaned it. But, I like this combo. I like the combo anyway. Some guys don't like the polished cases on, on the TT or the XT. But I think they look good. I think it looks good with the polished kicker window and the polished points cover. And once I finally get the other cover on there, it'll look nice. And you know, when I change my clutch, I might just polish that whole case out. Might just polish that whole case out. Or, or just polish out the round part and leave it black. But I'm going to get the, the billet cap. In the billet plug, eventually. I did the same case treatment on my other TT with the stainless frame. I polished the mag cover and the points cover and, and oil filter cover on it too. And I still may yet take this swing arm and put it on that bike. This is just a play bike for now. Just a play bike for now. In between actually restoring one of these to numbers matching in the way it should be. Just saving up parts, man. Takes forever to save up all those fucking parts. Hey man, 
it's come a long way. A damn long way. It is almost done. I'd wire it up still, but my weather pack plugs have not come yet. I don't want to use these kind of plugs because these things get old and hard and they crack and they split and they plus they allow dirt and grease and oil and 